Well, it's not bad to be in the habit of, whenever you throw away some electronic appliance, of clipping off anything that has this type of uh, package because it's probably a transistor or a silicon device of some kind. And some of them, especially if you are a electronics hobbyist or just may want to do something interesting uh, re or uh, reuse components, uh, you may find some gold. Uh, in fact, I just nice. did. Tip 120s are pretty common uh, transistors, general purpose uh, bipolar junction transistors, and that's cool. But I just found uh, this guy here is a uh, special type of transistor called a MOSFET that is able to carry, uh, this in particular one will carry 40 amps of current at 30 volts. So uh, you could run a uh, you could turn a rather large motor on and off from say your car battery or maybe even a 24 volt system and you could turn it on and off using a uh, one of the pins on here tells it to turn on and off and you could use a small button or something or a microcontroller to do that so definitely um, a very useful component so i just found uh, one called a tyn112 and this I've identified as a SCR or a silicon controlled rectifier. And these are used a lot in AC circuits. I've seen them in like a ceiling fan controller. Um, so pretty much I just take the part, try to find which one's the part number. Sometimes I'm wrong. There's usually a couple numbers, but you're looking for the longest, usually it's the longest string of of letters and numbers. So the D120 may be useful information, maybe identifies the, uh, what package the device is or something, or some, you can also usually find a supply or a manufacturer's symbol. And that looks like an ON, I think. So ON semiconductor perhaps. So if I can try searching B1545, we'll see if we can figure out what this is. So sure enough, I found a data sheet from On Semiconductor for the B1545, and it is a um, Schottky um, rectifier, power rectifier. So there's two diodes in here. It looks like the cathode is the center pin, and then you have a, a one, the anode of one, uh, and then the anode of the other. So there's two diodes. Well, I've finished sorting through my pile of silicon devices, and I have a lot of transistors. So first of all, there's a couple common varieties. The 3904 is the one I'm most familiar with. I'm glad that I got a couple 2222s. Those are uh, just a switching transistor, but they carry more current than most of the guys their size. I also found a couple common varieties, the 8050, the 8550, and the C945 are pretty common, as well as A94. I got a couple 90, uh, 9014s. I got only one 3906, the complement PNP to the 3904. Uh, in addition to transistors, I have some other cool finds. These two chips are power amplifiers for driving speakers, and each chip has two channels, and they're 18 watts. So that is uh, more than what you'll get with a, I think I've got one sitting here. This is a um, 386, LM386 audio amplifier, but it is a much lower power, perhaps a one watt or three watt, I can't remember. 18 watts, you can drive some serious speakers with that. Uh, we also have, oh, here's a LM35, a analog or voltage-based temperature sensor. So you could literally hook an a LED or something up to this device and it, it would get brighter or dimmer with the temperature, or you could hook it up to an Arduino and measure the voltage and convert it into a Fahrenheit or Celsius reading. Down here, I found some, some amazing power transistors, the biggest of which is a GT80J101. 
and I've never heard of a insulated gate NFET. It's a type of MOSFET, and this guy can handle 80 amps continuously, um, and it's rated for about 600 volts, and as well as 150, or actually 160 amp uh, of pulse of a, you know, a peak current. So that would be excellent for driving uh, large motors. We also have the K2698, another N-channel MOSFET, uh, capable of 15 amps continuous or 60 peak, and another smaller one, 7 amps continuous 21 peak. I found some of these um, kind of old style metal, you know, metal, I'm not sure what to, it's kind of a metal can with the um, screw, um, screw holes. The most common of these, or most well known, would be the uh, 2N3055, which I believe is rated for 15 amps at 60 volts, just a transistor. And these guys are actually rated at 30 amps at 60 volts, so that's a good find. I made or I found a couple voltage regulators, some positive, some negative, um, and oh, I even found a SCR. This is a special type of silicon device. It's not technically a transistor, but it uh, can operate as a switching device. Um, and that you can control some, and you can control AC waves. Um, it sort of clips off part of the AC wave and in a way controls the, um, like the duty cycle. So that's kind of interesting. These guys with, they are in the same package as the, I think it's a TO220 package, like all these, except they have so many legs. 8 or 10, no this has 7, anyway these guys are switching regulators and they can handle 1.5 amps. A switching regulator is like 95% efficient uh, or more, It's they're very efficient compared to the linear voltage regulators. They require a, a few uh, additional components, uh, they're not standalone, I think you need a coil to go with them and probably some capacitors and such, but uh, they're very useful. And see if I've got anything else noteworthy here, a couple power diodes, an unknown MOSFET of some kind. So yeah, overall, uh, a lot of interesting finds especially kind of coming for free from, you know, dead electronics. So I'll be curious to see what kind of projects these show up in. Some of them I can add to my collection immediately since they are in such high quantities. Um, it's nice because you can use four of them in a circuit and expect them all to work the same. So those will end up in a bag. Well, uh, thank you for watching. Hope that uh, you found this video entertaining.